Okay hey guys, three rigs for bottom fishing with fresh bait and works also with lures. So you've got the single, double, and a reverse dropper loop. And with the single, what we're gonna have is, here's your rod, your main line going down. And on the bottom of this, we're gonna have a surgeon's knot to a torpedo or a weight. And we're gonna have one knot out with a single hook. And on the double, very similar, torpedo on the bottom and one knot out for a single hook, another out, that makes it a double. And on the reverse, little slightly different, we're gonna take one of, it looks like a single drop loop, we're gonna put, instead of the hook here, we're gonna drop it on the bottom of it and we're gonna put the weight where the hook is. So it'll look something like this when we do it all. And that's your hook. I know it looks kind of weird, but that's your hook right there. So what's the differences between all of these? When we want to catch a lot of fish, obviously we feel like we want to double our hookups, but depends on the size, because if the fish is a bigger grade, there's chances that you might have a breakage somewhere with a double. Imagine having two really big grade sizes on a double, you're not going to be able to wind it up. So in those scenarios, we want to go to a single. With a single, it just gives you a better chance of ensuring that you're going to more likely bring it up. And when do you want to also use a reverse? It's just to give a free flowing movement on the hook here. So that bait is much more longer. This could be anywhere from like one and a half to two feet long lengths. And what you're doing is the, the bait there, let's just say this is your hook. Your bait is just floating on that line and it's just going with the current. It could be floating up or down and it gives the fish a better tendency to look at what the bait is and when they nibble on it there's no resistance or it's very little resistance and it'll give them the opportunity to bite on it the only downside with this was i did have a hookup to a rock when i was on near structure and i basically to rip it out or we bent our hook just about almost it was like a 90 degree angle and that hook was gone. There's another note is the weight. Uh, I'm using an eight ounce for example. Um, on the bottom of it, depending on your current, you don't have to use an eight. An eight will get you down there really quick. If the current's very calm on a single, if you go down to a four or a six, what happens is when that single hook is there, it gives less resistance for the fish too. So even though the knot's you know pretty tight, it's a short distance for it, when they come and nibble your bait, you want to give it less resistance when they tug on it. And that way you still feel your, you know, uh, no slack on your line, you still feel a, a connection to your bait. And you can feel every bite from it. And it gives them that less resistance, more likely for them to bite on it. So one consideration there. So let's do the knots themselves. Just grab some of this line. I do this method because I learned it from pier fishing. I don't know if it's the correct way that you would do it for bottom fishing, but it works really easy for me because I'm able to switch out hooks, weights really, really quickly and still have um, my leader on it and be fine. Um, I, I tested it out myself um, throughout this season and it seemed to work. So I have a surgeon's knot right here, really straightforward. You know, of course, everything you wanna do is wet the line, right? So wherever you have it above, one, one foot, two foot above, uh, this is your main line at the end, all right? This is the bottom of it. This is my surgeon knot right at the very bottom. I'm gonna do another surgeon right here. Same thing, we're gonna wet the line constantly, okay? I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So now that I have that knot, I, if you notice, I have my fingers like this. I'm just doing a little crisscross, but I have a loop right here. And I'm just gonna keep on looping this with my finger and keep make sure that you have this opening right here. Just a few times and then send that knot right through it. You'll have something that looks like this. Make sure that the entire knot is above it. Okay, does that look familiar to you? And slowly, as you're wetting this, make sure that it's right at the end of the bottom of that knot. Pull it, keeping it wet. And right there, 
I now have my first single loop. And what that does too is it helps push it away from your vertical line. So let's just do this for reference. I'm gonna hook up my weight. So this makes it really easy because I'm able to switch out weights really quickly. So did you notice I'm just putting it right through, slipping it on. This is what I do for the pier when I start it off. All right, I have my weight here and I have my single dropper loop. It pushes it away from your vertical line. Do you notice that, how it's perpendicular? Keeps it nice and taut right there. So from this, I'm just gonna have this hook. Depending on your hook sizes and depending on the eyelets, this also makes it really easy to switch your hooks. And put them around there really quickly. What do you think? Let's move this out. All right, and then same thing, you would do this another one or two foot above um, to make your double drop loop. You just wanna make sure that it's long enough so that your hooks on both of them don't tangle with each other, that's it. So with that in mind, let's check out the reverse. So with the same rig, almost, you know, depending on the length of everything, I could almost switch it all. So right here's the bottom of my, my, my line. I'm gonna put the hook over here. This is gonna look ugly. Make sure you clean off any tag ends too. And ideally, you know, you, you don't want to have this surgeon down on the bottom, but I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes. I would prefer to tie an actual connection knot uh, right onto the hook. So here's the bottom of my hook. And here's my torpedo. So I did have a dedicated rig um, that was for a reverse and dedicated for my dropper loop setups. So let's do this. Once you drop the weight down now, here's your main line right here. I'm gonna tangle this a bit. Here's your main line. Here's your hook. And with your bait on it, it just floats around wherever it needs to do. The weight's keeping it down. You still have a nice, good connection to your weight so you can feel you know, no slack. Um, once you feel a little bit of nibbles or bites, you'll know that you got it right there. So that's a reverse dropper loop. So the great thing also about this connection that we did here, it was a surgeon's and I also did a wrap right around it to give it um, that perpendicular touch. I also had to switch to smaller hooks. Um, I wasn't using this size, obviously. I think I was using four aught, I was using two aught, and I went down to an octopus um, hook, and I couldn't get it through the eyelet with this method when I had to fold it over, right? Because you, the eyelets are really small. So let's remove this real quick. And remove this one. Let's imagine our weight back on this, this for the single dropper or any other wood that you have. So this is my single dropper or double. And here's a line I just cut right here, which actually this one, you can tell by the, the perpendicular shape of it. And it's still a strong connection with it cut right there with the break. So with this, I can get my smaller hooks and tie my uni knot, whatever I need to do. Let's just do a quick one. Not the perfect knot, but just showing you what it looks like. And now I have a single dropper or a double dropper with smaller hooks. And obviously in this, with this rig um, and this method, if you change hooks, you just have to keep on snipping all the way through until you have nothing left and you'll have to retie a leader on it. But it is a good way to get smaller hooks on as necessary. Hope that helps you guys, man. Um, we went to Santa Rosa over the weekend with the boys. We hooked up on 40 sheephead uh, with 12 of us. Uh, one of the buddies, he caught, I think it came out to about 18 pounds. He was on really light bass gear, but great time. The best method that we did all live baits, sheephead loves shrimp. So we always brought shrimp. Um, I, I go to my, my local half day anywhere, just bring shrimp. You might not have sheep head there, but it just gives you the opportunity for it. So here we go, one last time on this. Your single, double, and your reverse. Hope this works for you. And remember, um, if the current is calm, 
lower down your torpedo weight to give less resistance for the fish. 